whether we're talking about Arch Linux, Gen2, Void, or really any other Linux distro out there, a lot of Linux users like to talk about bloat, and especially like to talk about it when it comes to trimming the bloat. Now this made a lot of sense in the early days of computing, where you didn't have much space or much performance, and you want to conserve this for the things that, you know, are actually important. But nowadays, even with like a couple of year old system, you can have, you know, 32 gigs of RAM, multiple terabytes of storage that you're never going to be using, and plenty of excess CPU performance. So every so often, I'll see posts like this pop up. I still see a lot of trim the fat requests. What is your modern reasons for debloating a Linux instance? I'm not saying you shouldn't, but it seems an awful lot of fuss for little gain. Maybe 2 to 5% speed gain in CPU and RAM, save some hard drive space, and possibly security lockdowns. But those are more edge scenarios. I was wondering what I was missing. Back in the day, yeah, I was working off borrowed hard drives on Frank computers and running into huge issues with 2GB hard drives running out of space due to a runaway log or something, but not in recent memory. And this thread has a lot of comments. So what I've done today is I've gone through the entire thread and picked out the common reasons why people like to do this, just in case you need some inspiration for debloating your system or maybe some copium. Firstly, don't you like having a system that you remotely have a chance to understand? If something stops working, if something breaks, you can say, this is the thing that I need to go and modify, I need to go and replace. It's not like it's being set up by one application and then something else is managing that, being managed by another application, or being managed by some like big meta application. It's this easy to find piece and you know what the piece is. Whether that's something like your bootload or something like your desktop or basically anything else in between. And when you know what you're running and there are less pieces to worry about, it is much easier to configure a system to best suit your needs. And in the same vein, what's the value in keeping something around if you don't need it and you're never going to be using it on your system? If you change your mind about something, it's not like you can't just go and easily reinstall it. A great example of this is comparing something like Arch, Void, Gendu, whatever one you want to pick, and something like Ubuntu. Something where it is a distro with this complete environment, all of this extra stuff installed. So when you install one of these minimal distributions, you basically know what is on your system. You build it pretty much from scratch. Now, not as from scratch as something like Linux from scratch, but a much more sensible point. The initial system you have is pretty much what needs to be there to have a functional system. And then anything you install on top of that is something that you had to go and actively choose. So you're only installing the things that you actually need on your system. Compare this to something like Ubuntu though, where there's going to be a lot of applications pre-installed that you're never going to use. You don't even know what the application is. It's just one of the things that comes along with the distro. And that's just with the general user land applications. It's very easy to use a distro like Ubuntu, a distro like PopOS, any distro like that, and have no idea how the underlying distro actually pieces together. And if that's good for your workflow, then great. Keep using it. But when it comes to troubleshooting, it is going to be harder. Speaking of things you don't really need, I feel like this one's going to be pretty unanimous. Do you really need, you know, two different desktops installed, five different terminals, three different file managers, and all of these other duplicated applications? Now, in my case, I tend to test a bunch of different applications, so I will keep things around and sometimes forget to uninstall things. But most people aren't making videos on the Linux desktop. There's not really any reason to have those duplicated tools around unless they are actually fulfilling a different use case. If you have, say, a terminal file manager and a GUI file manager, if you have, say, Vim as your text editor and then VS Codium as your code editor, these are, you know, technically fulfilling the same job, but they are very different applications. But do you need, say, Dolphin and PCMan FM and Thuna all installed together? Not really. Another thing is not everyone out there 
is running a reasonably modern system. Some people doing that by choice, most notably the people running 10 plus year old ThinkPads, but you might just not like spending much money. Or you might just not have much disposable income, whether you're young from a developing nation or just don't have that great of a job. And you're still using a system where these small two to 5% improvements actually make a really big difference. But even if you are using a reasonably good system, some people just like to lower the number for the sake of lowering the number. I have less packages installed. I'm using less RAM. I'm using less of my CPU. I'm using less storage space. It's sort of like this optimization game to bring the number as low as you possibly can. Because a lot of people out there aren't just using Linux as an operating system. It's their hobby. And one of the Linux hobbies that people take up is debloating their system, cleaning up their system, whatever you want to call it. And people like this are probably going to get some level of pleasure out of achieving this goal. The kind of people who would like to do something like LFS, where you might want to go and trim your system basically to the point of near instability, not to the point of instability, but getting rid of everything you don't need because it just seems like an enjoyable experience. Not just with the application level trimming, but there are a lot of people out there who like to trim out modules from their kernel that they're not using on their system. Sure, it might be used by something they might want to install later, but that's a problem we can deal with then. Right now, not using it doesn't need to be in the kernel. I personally have things outside of Linux that also interest me, so that's not something I'm going to spend my time with outside of, you know, doing it for the sake of a video. But if Linux is your primary hobby or your only hobby, and that's how you want to go and spend your time, hey, be my guest. But maybe you're not going that far, but still consider your system to be incredibly important. And you take things like security and privacy incredibly seriously. And the reason why you want to go and debloat your system is basically to reduce the potential attack surface. Maybe you don't want to have extra applications installed that have network access. Maybe you don't like the idea of having so many packages installed because maybe that package at some point is going to be taken over. This can be especially important when installing things from third-party repos like the AUR, Copper, and things like that, or installing things from language repos where there's basically... um no moderation, like the things get dealt with after the fact, whether we're talking about PIP, NPM, and things like this. While not being as much of concern for a regular home user, when we're talking about an enterprise or production context, this can be incredibly important. Say you have, for example, a web server that is publicly facing. There are always going to be people trying to break into your web server. So best practice, is only run the things that you need to be running. If it doesn't need to be running for the production system to be functioning, it probably shouldn't be running. Now, this is not as much of a concern for a static or a point release, but when we are talking about a rolling release, you're going to be getting updates coming in at a relatively frequent pace. And the more packages you have installed, the more packages you need to download. I have a, you know, reasonably fast connection from 10 years ago. I have 50 megabit, it's good enough, it's not great. I would like gigabit one day, but you know, by the time I have gigabit, the rest of the world's probably gonna be on 100 gigabit. Anyway, a lot of people out there have a much, much slower connection than I do, where downloading, you know, a couple of gigabytes might actually be a multiple hour or overnight process. And this is an even bigger deal on distros like Gen2, where most of the packages you're gonna have to compile. Now, most of them aren't gonna take that long to compile, but the more of them that you have, the longer the entire process is going to take. But what about the laptop users? Not everybody out there is using a desktop. And if you wanna use your laptop, you know, actually as a laptop, using it unplugged from the wall, you probably wanna have your battery last for a reasonably long amount of time. Not just, you know, an hour and it suddenly dies. So the best way to optimize your power usage is not running things. There are other things you can do after that to like optimize your CPU and things like that, but if there are applications running on your system that you are not using, stopping them running is usually a good way to deal with that problem. 
and you can take that further and use a much lighter environment. So instead of using a full desktop environment, go and use something like a tiling window manager, and then only set up the things that you need set up to make your system do what you need it to do. You can even go and do some weird ACPI trickery and have it so when you're using the battery power, it's using this very lightweight environment, and then when you switch over to wall power, it instead uses your full fat environment that has all of the bells and whistles running. That takes a bit of extra work to be doing, but it's totally possible. But even if you are on desktop, electricity is expensive, and it's certainly not getting any cheaper, so you might want to go and save a couple of cents here and there. Maybe it's not the best place to be going and doing it, maybe a better place is, you know, not running your dryer and things like that, but if you're going and cutting everything down, this is certainly a place that you can go to. But maybe there's nothing more to it. You like a simple environment, you use simple applications, you have a simple desktop, and you just prefer that sort of workflow. You start simple, you keep it simple, and there's nothing more to it. You're not trying to optimize your system. You don't really care. Like, you care about security and privacy to some extent, but it's not like one of your core focuses. And you just use your system like this because that's the way you want to use it. Now, obviously, most of this thread was about de-bloating your system, but it's totally fine that not everyone wants to do that. Might be an unpopular opinion, but I think it's not really necessary anymore. Most bloat on other operating systems is there and configured to auto-start for corporate reasons, and Linux, maybe except Ubuntu, doesn't have that. I would include things like Pop! OS and Manjaro and things like that, but anything outside of the, you know, very pre-setup distros doesn't have that. I have probably thousands of unused files and programs lying around, but when storage space is measured in terabytes, it just doesn't matter. And that's a totally valid opinion as well. In the end, use your system the way you want to use your system. And if you feel like getting a bit more out of your system and you have a bit of free time, well, maybe go and try it out. Maybe go and get rid of applications you don't need, go and clear out some unused files, maybe swap to a bit of a lighter environment and see how it goes. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, reach out my Patreon, subscribe to the pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Broderops and Plays. That's going to be it for me. And I'm out.